Hello. Today is Monday, July 17th, 2023. I'm Ben Fox from TC2, and this is Staying Connected. So on today's podcast, we're turning the tables on our longtime host of Staying Connected, Joe Schmidt. We're making him the guest and scarily me the host. So, Joe, I know you're going to be gentle with me. Hey, Ben, you're the host. I should be saying that to you. So that's a no then. Great. So I'm sorry to say that today is the last time that Joe will be on Staying Connected. Because at the end of this month, after over 20 years with TC2, Joe will be retiring. But before Joe heads off to the TC2 retirement village, we thought we'd pick his brain a little about how the industry that we work in has evolved over all of those years and perhaps get a few thoughts from Joe on how it might evolve in the future too. So Joe, back in 2002 when you started at TC2, MPLS wasn't really even a thing. Broadband was actually a new technology and really only for consumers. And Skype, if you can remember that, hadn't even come out, never mind WebEx and Teams. Yeah, that's pretty accurate, Ben. Most of TC2's work back then, it was traditional network deals where we'd focus on pushing voice rates down and sourcing technologies like frame relay and ATM. And no, Ben, I'm not talking about cash machines, but rather a packet type transport solution that really did usher in MPLS. It was probably, I don't know, the mid-2000s before MPLS really took off, which initiated a wave of network technology migrations. MPLS really did allow companies to consolidate all traffic, voice, data, video, onto a single network platform. That solution was talked about for such a long time, but it finally happened with MPLS. Right. I do remember that. And I remember even when we held conferences for our clients, when the entire day was spent just on MPLS. But now, of course, Joe, everyone's talking about the death of MPLS. Well, yeah. And for good reason. SD-WAN and less expensive access technologies are really changing the game. Internet, broadband and cellular services, those things are much faster and more reliable than when I started my career at TC2. And that means companies don't need that higher priced MPLS service anymore, or at least not as much. I think that's partially due to how the network providers are trying to, I guess, future proof their core networks by using fiber optics and technologies like network function virtualization. So Joe, go on then. What have been some of the other big changes you've seen in our work with large enterprises over all of these years? Well, One of the things that has made what we do exciting is the combination of technical change and regulatory change globally. When I look at what is possible today compared to when I started my career in technology, it's pretty eye-opening. Heck, Ben, I actually had an economics professor in college, or I guess you'd call it university. Well, he actually speculated that the phone company would never be broken up because it was a natural monopoly. Wow, really? Well, fortunately, I suppose he was wrong. Yeah, he sure was. And it's been fun to work with people that come into the industry at different points in time, because a lot of folks, they don't appreciate the technologies and the pricing structures that preceded what exists today. I mean, you see, for example, that has been a game changer in how we work and how we communicate. But for you see to work, You need a technology like SIP trunking and regulatory permissions to let those bits fly around the world. Managed service, I think that's another offering that has evolved an incredible amount over the years. Back in the day, the carriers used to be probably the strongest managed service providers out there, but I think that they are really losing their ground to these systems integrators. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. The SIs have most certainly brought their strengths in other areas of IT, such as service desk, desk site support, those kind of things, PC and other end device management services. And they brought that into managed network services and really pushed the ball forward in areas such as, you know, dedicated support models, automation. Agree. We've definitely seen that. Yeah, right. And we've seen that firsthand at TC2, as you just said. And as a firm, we've moved beyond our original set of offerings in telecom into those other IT services. Let's see. So we've seen big changes with network product manufacturers, too. I mean, Cisco and other network and IT manufacturers, they're shifting their focus from selling hardware to selling software and support. 
and to the recurring revenue that a software subscription model provides. You know, not too long ago, Ben, Cisco was pretty much the only game in town. Not so much anymore. And I think that's a good thing for enterprises. We as a firm, we always say real competition creates a healthy tension with vendors that typically results in a better deal with better technology and better services. Let me also point out that SD-WAN pricing models have powered this shift in network products away from device or hardware focused pricing to software as a service and subscription software pricing models. Right. And of course, SaaS and cloud didn't exist at all back in the early 2000s. Yeah, I think cloud has been and continues to be a huge shift for companies, both in terms of how networks have to support cloud-based applications in the cloud and SaaS deals themselves. It's been fascinating to see TC2s and LB3s work mirror that shift including supporting and negotiating cloud deals with the big CSPs. Right. And it's actually been really interesting to see the links between today's cloud deals and the telecom deals that we did in kind of yesteryear. Sarah and I talked about that a couple of months ago, actually, here on Staying Connected. So, Joe, we've talked a bunch about how the industry and indeed TC2's work has evolved from, you know, just negotiating voice rates and deals for network technologies that no one even remembers anymore to IT outsourcing, UC technologies and services and SaaS and cloud deals. But, you know, as you set sail into the sunset, Joe, what do you see in our future? Well, you know, we've been talking a lot on Staying Connected recently about AI. And I do think that as AI capabilities continue to accelerate, we're going to see a range of new technologies and IT services appear that companies, enterprises are going to want to buy. And that will present a whole new range of sourcing, financial and contractual challenges for them. Now, forget all the media focus on chat, GPT and other AI products for a moment. The fact is that the companies behind these new systems are monetizing the technology and already have products and pricing models that they offer. Just like we saw with cloud, we're going to see a proliferation of AI products and pricing models and a very steep learning curve for enterprise buyers and users in terms of how to most effectively source and contract for these services and then manage the spend and the growth. A lot of enterprises have really struggled to control, manage, and optimize the growth in their spend on cloud services. And I think I would predict, Ben, that exactly the same challenges will be true for AI. Well, thanks, Joe. Great chat as always. And I certainly look forward to doing AI deals. And of course, Joe, you'll be hugely missed at TC2 and from staying connected. You know, we're obviously really happy for you, but terribly sad, of course, for all of us. But of course, staying connected will continue. And I'm sure Joe will be listening from his retirement rocking chair. So if you'd like to learn any more about anything we've discussed today, or if you'd like to discuss other ICT needs with me or any of our LB3 and TC2 colleagues, please give us a call or shoot us an email. You can also stay current by subscribing to Staying Connected, checking out our websites, or by following us on LinkedIn.